Hey, crazy deep. Help me up. No, I'm not touching you. Help me up. Struggle. There it is. That's something, yeah. Righto, so we're on our last day of the search for the little Volkswagen Golf. We're all packed up, ready to go. The only problem is we've got the big American bear still hibernating in his chalet. He wasn't tough enough to stay in a tent last night, so... Four o'clock he said he'd be ready. It's now 6.30. person that we're looking for is uh, has come out the Marunda Highway all the way out to Healesville okay and he's passed all these wineries that are, are in the winery region on the way here he gets into Green Street and where does he go does he go straight up the Marunda Highway to to the Marunda Dam does he go through the mountains of uh, to the Black Spur or does he take a turn back and curl back be behind the stores and loop back and come back through Yarra Glen past the Sugarloaf Reservoir, which is the largest body of water in the region, towards the airport. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to actually go up, we're going to look at the bodies of water that are close to the Marinda Dam uh, that, we, that we have already looked at but we haven't searched and cleared. We're gonna clear those. We're gonna clear the golf course if we can get into the golf course. Yep. We're gonna come down the Hillsville Yarra Glen Road and we're gonna check the Yarra, at Yarra Glen, we're gonna ch check the river. At Yarra. You know, we've cleared a lot of this region right here. Gone all the way up to Tuolongi and we've cleared the strawberry fields. We have come back down. You know, we've been, we've, we've been in this entire region and we've been in how many, 40, 50 bodies of water? A lot. A lot. And, and we're not finding, um, we found one vehicle, but we're not finding the vehicle we're looking for. So we need to keep expanding our search a little bit here outside of that 14 minute radius, just in case uh, the phone was off and it turned off and we, we don't know where he went from there. Yesterday, but if he's gone yeah. in the water since then, we might have to yeah, re look at scanning. Yeah, he's gone overnight. He's had an incident last night. Yeah, he's had a drunk, so. What kind of vehicle yeah. is it? Uh, mate, I don't have the information at hand. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll. I'll when you I'll when you get here, show. we'll look at the maps yeah. and we'll we'll see if we can come and help you. Yeah. Okay. Right, I think last night I was just looking it up. Uh, uh, so he was up at uh, Nabafong. He was heading to Narbathong. Okay. So how far he got, we don't know. Um, you got all that river there, the Archer and River, all the way yeah. up there. Yeah, it has been out all night searching around the Tulsa Dam. So what information he had that made him think that was where to look, I don't know. But, um, well, yeah. we can put in there. There's no dramas with that. Um, as I said, we've got all the deep water okay. stuff. Do you mind if I pass your details on to the sergeant from Junction that's running this? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give him a buzz now and pass on his details. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I don't have all the information and I'm, I'm driving as well, so I don't actually have it in front of me, so. Yeah, that's fine, brother. Um, you, you pass on my details. We're happy to help. We're in the area for at least another couple yeah. of days, so it yeah. might be fate. Cheers, mate. We'll, uh, we'll see, you see you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Well, how about that? So we've just rung the local police and spoken to them, and they've actually had a young fella threaten to drown himself last night. And he's in his car, and he was heading up towards uh, Marabathon. So the dad's been out looking in waterways all night. He's gone to a dam, which I can't quite see at the moment, but when the senior constable gets here, we'll go through it all and hopefully add a bit more information and see where we can start searching. So we might even put this on the back burner and see if we can find this guy who's just gone in the water, potentially. He might, he was drunk, he's driven off, he's had some kind of um, domestic incident. We don't really know all the details yet, but you know, we 
there might be a reason why we're here, Bill. So Narbathon is uh, just south of Granton. Uh, it has a reservoir up above and what I see is the Tarnifer Road and the highway that crosses over a large body of water. He just said it mentioned the dam then, but... Um, yeah, the Acheron River, A-C-H-E-R-O-N. And it is on the Marunda Highway. You know, it, it's all the way there. And we came through Narbathon on the way here. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to know what the story is. If he's saying, yeah, I'm gonna go drown the smoke, he's in a vehicle. Well, I mean, you know, you, you if we go through Narbathon, the next big body of water is the body of water that you've sonared before. Yeah. yeah it, it's sad, you know, like, um, you start doing this a lot and, and you start hearing the stories. It, it's like anything, if, if you're in the sciences, you you are you start getting drawn to, to that same world of sciences. But if you're in the world of missing persons and people that are putting their vehicles in water and or, you know, losing their life, you start uh, to see it a lot more. It's a lot more frequent. Um, and you gotta keep take care of yourself. And that's why when, with Adventures with Purpose, we're doing an adventure with the purpose of finding people, but we're trying to keep it light because the your mental health is also a very important piece of this. Um, as a diver, as as the guy that's running around putting all this together, and you, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually off work because of PTSD issues. So, you know, I, I'm very acutely aware of the damage that can be caused by doing this kind of work. So, um, I'm struggling with 12 years of trauma, um, being exposed to death and and violent situations. So, I'm still working through that. I'm getting help at the moment with that. And while I'm off work, I still want to be helpful and help community. So. I'm coming out doing this, but I am still conscious of not exposing myself to further trauma as well. It, it doesn't take a lot for a person to find that dark place. Yep. And that dark place, um, if you can't snap yourself out of that dark place, a lot of times, you know, people lose their lives with it. Yep. And I think that's the, one of the things that, that, that Adventures with Purpose really uh, tries to, to talk about a little bit more is the mental health side of this piece. Yes. Um, if you're struggling with mental health, we've said it before, talk to someone. Go seek professional help. Life is such a great gift. Don't throw it away. You only get one shot at this. Don't throw your life away just because you're having a rough time. Life is like peaks and troughs. One day you're on top of the world, the next day you're down the bottom. But you will go up again. There's plenty of people around who are going through similar things. I myself deal with depression and anxiety. I've got PTSD issues. I'm on a medication to try and do it. I've got my own health issues. That could, I could sit in the corner and just be rocking backwards and forwards, but I choose not to do that and to go out and spend my days helping others. That's what I want to be remembered for. Uh, we've all got limited time on this earth and I just want to make as much of an effort as I can to help others. As you said earlier, Bill, when you're focused on yourself, you just spiral down into that dark hole. When you start thinking about other people and other families, and then actually relating to other people who are going through similar situations, then you can actually be helpful. So if you're struggling, try not to focus on yourself, your own problems, work out how you can then go forward and help others. Well, I mean, I think it really comes down to just trying to find a way to make a difference in the community around you, with your family, with your friends, and, and, and having the support of your family and friends that makes all the difference in the world. Worrying about your brother or your sister or, or your cousin or your uncle or the, the next door neighbor more than yourself can snap you out of that dark place because you see that, that they're in a even further look you know darker place than you are sometimes and all you're doing if you're hurting yourself or trying to take your own life the reality is the only people you are really hurting are those who truly love you yeah those it, who love you the most are gonna hurt the most and that's why we have these families who have you know 16 years wondering what's happened to donnie you know you've got you know Nicole, jason nicole's son 14 years 14 years it's really it's hard too. like you, you know you don't know where they are 
And, and that's the hardest thing for these families. They can't turn the page in their book in their life. It's one of the most worst tortures you can do psychologically to anyone. You're, you're always wondering if that's the pond they're in, yeah. or that's the river, yeah. or if they went off the cliff. And you're living your life wondering, wondering, wondering what happened to someone else in your family because you don't have any idea where they are. Now let's then, get let's get to the let's get to the nice things. Let's talk about sweets because I'm not talking about any more dark. Do you know what anymore. I'm thinking about? What I'm thinking about apple turnover. Apple turnover. I could go because apple turnover is like a pastry. Hold it over, and you've got stewed apple. Anything with stewed apple, I'm all over that. I would love anything with stewed apple. A uh, little bit of cream, not too much cream. Problem is, this, the most um, apple turnovers have too much cream, and you eat them, and cream goes everywhere. I think, but you, know, I think you kind of like that. It gets in your beard. No, yeah. yeah. You get, so you have flavor savers. Flavor savers. <laughs> flavor savers. You had to yeah. make it weird. Didn't you had to make it weird. Had I got to go weird. weird. I had to go directly to weird. Nope. Apple turnovers. I mean, with the name Macintosh, I'd love anything with apples. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna jump in here, we're gonna go upstream with the with the motorboat, all the way down so we can clear everything. Uh, we're gonna put the big boat in with the engine and clear it all, set it up. So we're gonna be here for a little while, but the Yarra River is a very key piece because we're running out of uh, real estate with regard to river crossings and ponds that are actually in the search region. Um, the only thing that we have left is to actually start looking at the Yarra River up uh, near Launching Place. We're going to look at maps and clear that, but we got to clear the Yarra River first. The real deal right here, like we decided to put the big boat in, one for the current, and the sergeant who was here actually said there's another access point right down. So well, I think clearing the whole thing here. As far as we can go up, as far as we can go down. You know that guardrail comes all the way down into here. Yeah. Uh, there's a four-wheel drive path. There's this path that goes in a circle. There's a lot of access points right here, and yeah. and it is it, it's within our. Within our search parameter, this is the this is that circle that we need to clear in 14 minutes, and 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 this is where you typically find missing persons in their vehicles in these really remote little spots, um, off the beat off the road, where it's easy access. Uh, whether it be an accident coming down the hill, where those memorials are, uh, and they got all the way here, or it could be that someone that drove in here. And drove their vehicle in the water. Crazy so. deep. Help me up. No, I'm not touching you. Help me up. Buddy. Struggle oh, with it. I'm struggling. Yeah, you're struggling. Give me but I got, I got Give a boat. Me a hand. Hurry up. Don't pull me in. <laughs> oh, my key was in my pocket. Oh, no. You keep falling. I was trying to wash my feet. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Oh. He spent more time playing in the water than he does anything else. Oh. Just playing around. Ooh. Ooh.
Amazing Australia. I mean, you, you're in a river, in the Yarra River, and then you come out of the Yarra River, and it's just rugged and beautiful and hot. We've gone from kayak to big boat to truck to truck with trailer to truck without trailer. We found one vehicle in a right in the right space, just not the right vehicle. So we're Yeah, you have to. There's no way, no way around it. Just put everything back in the truck. We're going to get on to the uh, launching place, which is on this Yarra River as well. Yep. And then, we're, we're, you know, if uh, the police call with regard to the missing person that's up near Arbathong, Victoria. Through the Marinda Highway, up over the top of the mountain, An, another missing person uh, it has been... Uh, They've been trying to find him. The father's out looking for him right now, and so are the police. Uh, I actually cleared that um, lake uh, last time I was down here, so I know if we find a vehicle in there, it's going to be... So, so what Dan's saying is that uh, he's already, when he was doing this missing person in the past, he's cleared that lake, so he knows uh, when a vehicle actually shows up on, on sonar, that it wasn't there before. Um, he'll know that location. So if there is something of a shadow or, uh, of a new vehicle, uh, he'll pick up that anomaly because he knows that there was nothing there the last time he was there. We're gonna get going here, but ama what an amazing little adventure though. It is. I mean, we're, we're in a river in the mountains and just a beautiful place. And the crazy thing is, uh, Dan, I, I can see that, I think I can see that lake we were on yesterday, and that's that house on the hill. So it's just a beautiful place, really unique. It is not something. It is the real route Yarra River, though. That's going to drop right off, buddy. You going over your head with your keys? You're not going to get a vehicle in here. Are you, are you going to go in there with your keys in your wallet? I'm not going to go any further. Are you sure you're not going to slip? Yeah, there you go. You know what I smell? I... Take some no, you know what? Get smell. Take, take, take a big whiff. It smells like something I know. Sunscreen? No. It's not sunscreen. It smells like prawns from the back of your refrigerator. <laughs> right here. We do have to get time to clean that up. Yeah. Can you go off that bridge? Yes. Should you maybe check this corner? Because you could drive in here and go off the edge, maybe. Middle of the day, main road. I mean, you can you can see everything, and you can't get through these bars. I mean, look at the bars. Yeah, you're not getting a car. You're not getting a car through here. I mean, a car could be out there. It could be over there. Why don't you just dive it? Why don't you just swim it with? Just dive in there. And come out this side. It's probably the smarter way to do it. Just put your lights on and dive it and see if you find anything. Maybe you find a, a, a relic. Oh, yeah. Look at him go. The things we do, eh? Things we do. Huh? Don't need this high. It's not deep.
it's not deep enough for a car. It's lucky to be like I can stand up, be five foot, six foot. Okay. If there was a car in there, I would have ran into it. But it's is too that, shallow anyway. Are those comfy? They are comfy. Because they are so nasty. No. So the owners would have a remote control which they use to open and close the gate. So it's not like it's gonna be a gate that's left open by accident. Yeah, I don't I don't see them being able to get in here. We can only just see that pond down there. Well, with that in mind, I reckon that one's done. Well, well, we just can't, can't get to it. Can't get to it. So, and, uh, and that gate's been there since 2006. That gate's been there a long time. Pretty interesting place, beautiful, unique. Tennis courts and the walking trails down to the pond, but you know, very difficult to get a vehicle in here. Um, seems to be uh, well, kind of guard, kind of guarded, kind of. Um, but you have to take this road here to go to the corner of the parking lot to then jump in the pond down below. I just don't see you getting in there. This is the location we're at right now. And those are the ponds that I just don't think you can get into uh, at the country club. Uh, very, it's all fenced and gated. Again, here we are. It's just gated all off. I don't think you can get in there. We're gonna call that cleared. So we're at the end of the recreation, Yara Recreational Facility, at behind the football field, uh, right in the center of town, on the way to Melbourne on the Yara Glen Road. And uh, this parking area circles out in dirt, ends right here, and then it puts us directly down a hill, directly into the water. Yeah. Hmm. Well, as I said, you can see the big eddy that just curls around here and the water flows out. So what we can do is we can put the um, kayak in here and check both directions as far as we can. Because this is a big section of the Yarra, so we want to clear it. It's also on the way home. It's also on the way home. Kayak. Um, you don't want to just jump in there with your snorkel and mask and... No, I don't want to do that. So, you want to put the big kayak in? I don't want to do any of it. I don't really want to do any of it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I, I think it's a perfect chance to put in whatever you think is the most maneuverable. Do it, just because I, I, I'm so excited about picking things up and putting things down. We're getting closer though. I mean, this is interesting. I mean, you come around here, you do a 360 spin, you lose control because you think you're cool and you end up down the embankment and into the river. Um, so it's definitely, a, it's possible. 
it's a long way to go. It's a long way to get, but it is 14 minutes from town or from Hillsville, from the Green Street light. So it, it's possible. You can show we've got a car up here in the top end of the eddy. There's a car on its roof, right hand side, just down there. So there's multiple cars in here. Multiple cars. 3.8 meters deep here. Just drops right down in the eddy. And just so everybody sees where we are, we are right at the end of the parking lot in a corner, in an eddy, on the Yarra River. And right now, Dan is is spotting that we have, I mean, in this one little beautiful- Car on that side, car on that side. So pretty much on either side of us. So we have at least two cars, possibly three, Dan? Possibly three, there's one that's on its roof with its wheels sticking out. Wanna keep on going back and forth? So recap, um, this is the uh, location on the corner of the football fields behind everything. And right here in this giant little hole in the corner of everything, we have found one, two, three cars at the minimum. One upside down on its roof, one upright, and we're not sure on the third. I'm gonna let the batteries uh, cool off a little bit uh, from the electric motor. Uh, turn off the sonar and just get everything kind of powered down and take a look at what we're looking at here and see if we can come up with a plan of attack. So Dan, I'm going to have you hold the camera for me real quick yep. and so I can zoom in on this. So we, in this little hole that we found, I, I ha, kind of have a feeling that this might be very similar to the GTI. It looks like you have a big car there with two windows with the front this way. But when you look at it a different way, it actually looks like it's two cars, something on the backside and something in the front. And when you look at it, it looks like the tire is there, the same front window corner, and the same back window with the back secondary window in the rear seat. So, you know, it. It looks like there's multiple cars in this section we know of, but this one here looks very similar to the car we're looking for. So I think what we do is we get a magnet on it. Yep. Uh, Position it, get some more shots of it that are going around it. See if we can get some live scope it. Yeah. And, live and scope it. See if we actually d differentiate it from that it's two cars there and that this car is sitting by itself and yeah. it has that same angle, but it has the same angles on the back corner. It has the same angle on the front uh, front window of the driver's side. It looks like all windows are closed. Yep. Okay, and it looks like it has that same back window secondary piece, which is back there, and it has that same curve of the glass in the back. Run your finger down the back. See where that that object is at the back. Right here. That, that is so much lower than the window. It is. So. If that was the trunk, it would be up at the height of the window. But if you look at this picture, this when it comes down, it goes to the wheel well. Yeah. This wheel is below the surface, so it, it actually. But I think that there is behind it. Is something else. It's something behind it, and so is this back here on the front. Yeah, like that's that, definitely something. Else. That, that could be the hood curved up, but it, it's not. When you look at it this way, it looks like a, a 1950s, you know, panel van. But when when you look at it, where that secondary object could be behind it that right there looks like the vehicle we're looking for yeah um and, and excuse the cameras the cameras have been through hell but the we, we really have something that's very similar in design of the windows scheme design of the metal structure and the back curvature of the back 
window. Well, let's throw a magnet on it and let's do some more scanning and then we can dive. So that's that dead tree, that dead tree. Stay right there. It won't pick it up on this because we're standing still. It'll just be all drawn out lines. But we're in four point. I'm 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 more looking at like four point two meters. That's a different one. No, that's the same one we're talking about. This is the one we're, uh, we're looking at. Almost like some fucking like jewel cab ute with a fog glass back.
Yep, 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 drop it straight down. Got it? I, I got, I got pull. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Check it. Are, are we on it? Yep, we're on. You sure? On a tip from a winery company, he said, take the Yarra Glen, take Yarra Glen Road and go look behind the football field, you know, and the soccer field over there and that it goes directly into the water and it's, you know, there's a bunch of different spots over here to look at. And we would never come over here if it wasn't for the guy from the winery. So um, a great tip. I mean, we've searched everything else and we've cleared everywhere else that we could possibly clear in that, in that 14 minute circle around Hillsville. Um, other than the Maroondah Dam. And so we're now here on the Yarra River, about halfway home for the missing person. Um, and ironically, at the 15 minute mark. I mean, right now he's on the front of the vehicle, I believe, from what I saw on sonar. He's at the far front of the vehicle. Um, and the vehicle's looking upstream from what I saw. So. Taking a lot of time here, a lot of time. Uh, so let's see what happens. Let's see what he finds.
Jan has car parts in his hand to identify the vehicle. Not our car. But I did manage to pull the, the grill off it. It's been down there a very long time. It's actually a station wagon. It is a station wagon. All the roof is rusted off it. And at the front lights, like you've got like a, a raised curved bit where the headlights sit up along the bonnet. Like it's really old. We might be able to identify it from this, but definitely not our vehicle. Covered in fishing line. So, station wagon, I'm thinking 70s. If anyone can recognize this type of grill, let us know. All the windows are up. Where the roof has been rusted out though, I can actually get down into the cab of the, the vehicle, but it's full of silt. Like, I, I couldn't find the steering wheel, it was that full of silt. I could reach in and feel the top part of the uh, windscreen, that's how I went down the front of the vehicle and ripped this off. So, not our vehicle, but that's good that we can write that off. We'll let the local police know that it's in here. They may already know. It's been down there a long time. Yep. My car's been down there so long. Everywhere I was touching it was just crumbling my fingers. So there's no real logical way how to get that out of the water. And all the oil and the fuel that may have been in there, I fear it's long gone now. It is completely corroded. So we've scanned this part of the Yarra River, probably a kilometre up uh, the waterway, down past the bridges, probably another 500 metres mm -hmm. uh, past the golf course. Um, we've located the old station wagon here, and um, we're just doing our due diligence by letting you guys know. As I said, the, the issue for us is, once a window goes up on a car, how does someone get out of it? The water pressure holds the door in, unless they've pushed it in, in neutral in right. neutral then that's fine but i had a, a gentleman who drove into the nepean boat ramp and couldn't get out because his yeah. windows were done so the water pressure holds the doors closed they freak out they can't the electric windows whatever don't work they start hyperventilating and panic sheer panic and all of a sudden they're perished mm. so that's why we particularly rang you is because the windows were up and we couldn't clear it properly you would literally need a dredge. I don't think you could pull it out because it's just going to rip apart when you try and pull it out. So, how, how much uh, could you see? How far in front of you? Oh, literally 12 inches. So it's it's very poor visibility. I couldn't tell what colour it was. It was just too rusted. Every time I, there was lots of uh, uh, chrome trim along the roof. There was a whole heap of chrome trim on that. Um, on the windowsill there was some chrome trim. Uh, I managed to get down the front, wriggle, 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 pull that um, uh, so grill out. When came off the magnet, the magnet actually had blue on it. It's, uh, it's the 1960s. 1960s. What a beautiful old car. Wagon. Oh, I'll tell you what. That grill is... And that's the, the how I was trying to explain the... Um, Chrome. The lights, no, yeah. the lights, because of the it was curved oh, up on there. Yeah, okay. That's it. So what is that one? That is a 1959 Holden FC. They call it a station sedan. I mean, we were looking at it from the standpoint of, did he go? Which way did he go? Did he go north, south, east, or west? from his location here and did he double back to go to, to um, another pond, a lake, a reservoir. But he only has a couple hours to get back to home because he's got to get in his suit and tie. Did he come out here to, to actually get a present for his dad? And that's why he's out here to a case of wine for the 60th birthday party? Something. But we can't figure out where we went from here because we have checked 54 bodies of water. Um, so I don't know how you're going to go and getting permission. There was a boat ramp there we saw. Like it's a massive long boat ramp. 
burial now. If we can get there, and if we can get all the way to the boat ramp, then there's a potential for someone, because it only took one second. Like it, it takes one second for someone to go to a boat ramp or to this thing, gone, and you wouldn't even know that they ever went here. And that's the biggest thing, it's like the Maroon to Dam, you could get all the way to the helicopter pad, and it's lunchtime, 11.50 is the ping. Everyone's sitting inside. He could have gone right by everybody who's sitting down below in, in the dining facility. As search and rescue said, all, all the stolen cars get dumped in the river, and you, they've got, they know that there's probably a hundred in that river. So well, I've done uh, eight, nine missing person searches on foot. I found seven out of the nine. Two of them were uh, schizophrenics, 21 years old, couldn't find them. But I found the other seven all deceased in the woods. Police would go for 12 days and then they would run out of resources and I would go in and find them. And so, all of them on the river. Every one of them is on the river. We are drawn as human beings to the water. We sit to next to a tree, next to a place that we feel comfortable at, next to a place that is something from our, our childhood. Um, and the river is typically where we go. And I don't know why it is, but we find it in almost every one of our missing person searches it's typically a river or it's an accident where someone drives into a brand new drainage swale that is mm. eight foot deep in a subdivision that they did the that google earth took them there or the end of a, a driveway or road that goes directly into a river mm. that google earth took them across it where it doesn't actually cross it <laughs> um and that's typically the dementia side of things yeah. and the american americans tend to do that kind of stuff yeah but yeah, in the US, a bit we, simple. US, we have 3,500 missing persons. <laughs> yeah. In vehicles. Well, but it's definitely not because of the fact that you're driving on the right side of the road. Oh. I mean, completely backwards. Everything you have to cross over. I mean, how many times have we had okay, to turn around? That's enough. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Use the language. GTI at speed and not know the roads like, like the back of your hand like you had a map and you had a, a, a driving buddy that actually was a specialist in passenger seat and you were driving fast at any point in time you could lose control in a second by whatever well, it takes a minute. you no, look, look down at your phone to see if you have service now you're next thing you know boom you're gone off this cliff get hyped up watching Top Gear and think that you're the stick you know, that, that car is probably how far down the hill Probably only 150 meters. 150 meters. But it probably could have gone another. The only thing that stopped it in the front, you can see where it's hit a big tree. 